Good morning, church. Welcome to Yishun Methodist Mission, our worship service. And uh, we are glad that you are able to join us. Uh, let's begin our call to worship. Please stand. This morning, we declare our desire, our intention as we come to worship the Lord together. We have come to delight in the good gifts of God. Let's meditate on God's word day and night. We trust we will grow week by week. Amen. Let's remain standing and let's worship the Lord. And those of us who are a bit weaker throughout the worship, if you need to sit down, please go ahead and do so. Amen. The word of the Lord in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 12 says, It is I who made the earth and created mankind on it. My own hands stretch out the heavens. I marshal the starry host. Lord, you are the great God that made heaven and the earth. And you brought forth order in the universe. How majestic and how awesome is your name in all the earth. Let's just come and worship our God, God of wonders. Lord of all creation, of water, earth, and sky, the heavens are your tabernacle, glory to the Lord on high, God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy. Holy, the universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. You are a God who created the heavens and the earth, and we want to praise you. Early in the morning, I will celebrate the light. When I stumble in the darkness, I will call your name by night. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy, the universe declares your majesty, you are holy, oh God of wonders, God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy, the universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and earth, and we sing hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, you are good, oh God. You 
you are holy. God of wonders. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. Precious Lord, reveal your heart to me. Father, hold me, hold me. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, 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 holy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God of wonders. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy, precious Lord. Precious Lord, reveal your heart to me. Yes, Lord. Father, hold me. Hold Universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. You are holy, holy. Yes. Who else commands all the hosts of heavens? Who else could make every king bow down? Who else can whisper darkness and he trembles? It is only but a holy God. Hallelujah. Commands all the host of heaven. Who else could make every king bow down? Who else can whisper in darkness tremble? Only a holy God. What are the beauty? such praises what are the splendor outshines the sun what are the majesty rules with justice only a holy God come and behold him come and behold him the one Consumes like fire. What other power can raise the day? What other name remains undefeated? Only a holy God. Yes, He's our holy God. Come and behold. The one and the only Cry out, sing holy Forever a holy God Come and worship the holy God 
the only God. Hallelujah. The Lord invites us to come into His presence. The Lord invites us to come to His river. Come and be cleansed because only You, O Lord, can cleanse us, can forgive us from all unrighteousness. I am going, bringing sins I cannot bear. Come and cleanse me, come forgive me. Lord, I need to meet you. Precious Jesus, I am ready to surrender every care. Take my hands now, lead me closer. Lord, I need. Come and join us in the river. Come find life beyond compare. He is calling. He is waiting. Jesus, Lord. Jesus longs to meet you there. Cry out, Lord Jesus. Precious Jesus, I am ready to surrender every care. Take my hands now, lead me closer. Lord, I need.
sing verse 1 again. To the river I am going Bringing sins I cannot bear Come and cleanse me Come forgive me Lord I need Come and cleanse me, come forgive me, Lord I need to meet you there. Um, brothers and sisters, maybe you can sit down. But let your heart come, come before the Lord who calls out to us. Come before our God who is holy. Yes, holy, holy, holy Lord, God Almighty. Holy God, we thank you that you are calling us to be a holy people because we serve a holy God. Lord, we come giving thanks to your Lord God for this reminder over these last many weeks that it is your word that forms us. And so today, Lord God, as we come, we ask of you, Lord God, let your word shine into our hearts, your word that's sharper than a double-edged sword, that can cut between soul and spirit, bone and marrow, that discerns the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Come search us. And if there be any sin that's still lurking, Lord, help us to face up to it so that we can run to you and ask of you, Lord God, for your forgiveness and for your word because Lord you cleanse us and you wash us by your word that we may be a church a radiant church that is holy and blameless before you Father we ask of you dear Lord God to help us be a people who will not be lazy in the reading of your word, in the study of your word. That we will be a people who are not lazy to remember your word and to chew on your word. So that indeed your word will be a lamb unto our feet and a light unto our path. So that Lord, when we need guidance, we won't be looking up Google, but we will be looking to you and trusting for your rhema word to enter into our hearts, to guide our hearts and guide our lives. Lord, we look to you. There are times where we are busy looking for things and pleasures around us. But help us, dear Lord God, to be a people who hunger and thirst for you, who delight in your word. Just like a baby delight in milk, help us to delight in the pure milk of your word so that we may be nurtured and we, in our spirit and we may grow, dear Lord God. We want to be a growing church, a growing people, growing in our Lord. And if there be hard places in our lives, areas that are not pleasing, Lord, may your word that is like fire and like a hammer that breaks the rock to pieces. Come and refine us. Come and break up the, the hard places in our heart and in our lives so that we may be tender before you. So that we may be yielded when we hear the voice of your Spirit speaking to us. Lord, help us to be a people of your word. 
Help us, dear Lord God, so that this many weeks of listening to your word, focusing on your word, will indeed be able not only just to inform us, but to transform us into the likeness of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So today, Father God, as we listen to your word, we ask of you, dear Lord God, to give us hearts that are hungry to hear your words of grace and truth. We thank you, Lord God, for hearing our prayers. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's prepare to hear the word of God being proclaimed. This morning's scripture reading is taken from Psalm 1. I shall be reading from the English Standard Version. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Every Sunday morning, Jim faced an internal struggle within him. Sometimes he wakes up on Sunday morning late, and he asked himself the same old question. Should I go to church or not? Maybe I'm so tired now. God knows I should go to bed again. But often in his internal struggle, the problem he has is this. He finds the Bible all too familiar. After all, Jim reads the Bible almost every day. Or at least he tries to on his commute Jim has been in church for many years. He knows that when the pastor comes up to preach, it will always be about God and about how to be a good Christian. Sometimes when he stumbles himself into church, he will ask himself, what else is new here? I already know what the pastor is talking about. Jim would think, in his head as he sits there to listen to the sermon. Do you sometimes feel like you are Jim? Sitting, listening to the sermon, coming to church, reading the Bible can feel very familiar, especially if you have been a diligent Christian for many years. I hope that this series of four sermons formed by God's Word will begin to stir our hearts to rethink. Sorry, I realise that it's not my sermon slides. Can I have my sermon slides? So we have been through a series of four. Today is the last of this Formed by God's Word series. We saw how the authority of God's Word was undermined in the history of our church some 500 years ago. Remember the sermon that was preached to us about Martin Luther. How the church at that time lost the authority of God's word and placed it on human beings instead. Yet what was interesting is that God comes to his church and he reforms the church. Only until we retain the Bible's true effect that the scripture is breathed out by God, then 
we will feel that our Christian life will be one that is full of power. That's the second sermon that's been told to us, right? Then last week, we looked at how God's Word is alive and active. This almost means to us that sermons should never be boring, even though the preacher can be very boring. Because this word is living and active, not through my words, but in your hearts. This word can be living and active. Until we realize that God's word is living and active, we will treat this Bible as a mere book. Book full of words that seems to be written 2,000 years ago that sometimes may feel irrelevant in our lives today. Until God's word is handled correctly, we will then begin to appreciate His life and His power that, will bring, that God will bring through His word into our life. I am sure that all of us seated here, as well as those who will watch this uh, delay telecast of this worship service, we all, as good Christians, we seek after God's blessing. Correct, not? Can I say, safely say that we all seek after God's blessing? We don't want that sinful and dirty life of ours. What we want is that pure blessing that comes from God. It is only until we are formed by God's word, no blessing will come into our lives, dear brothers and sisters. So today, as we conclude this series, uh, let's think about how then should we treat this word of God so that we can be found in God's blessing. Yeah, this is not far from us. I think you have it on your phone or you perhaps have brought a Bible to church or perhaps have a few at home. We all have God's word. We all want God's blessing. The question is, how should we treat this word of God so that we are found in God's blessing? Thankfully, God didn't leave us to, to fumble around, huh? God leaves us with someone that Fimi just read for us. Someone, not someone, huh? <laughs> but the book of Psalm, the first Psalm, <laughs> paints to us a beautiful picture of how the life-giving presence of God's Word is the basis of the blessing that we are seeking as Christians. You know, for generations, this Word of God has proven itself to be true in lives of millions of Christians that have went before us. So today we ask ourselves, how can we treat the Word of God rightly so that we can be found in the life of blessing that Jesus promised to us? Let us open our Bibles to the book of Psalm, to the first Psalm out of the 150. Uh, for the children uh, amongst us, huh? I'm going to paraphrase the first verse for you, okay? So children, listen up. Blessed is the Christian who do not walk by listening to the wicked. Blessed is the Christian who do not stand with sinners. Blessed is the Christian who do not sit with those who mock other people. Someone begin by explaining to us what a blessed life in Christ looks like. It tells us that we need to be aware that we can be easily wicked, that we can be blatantly sinning even though we are called Christians, that we can be nastily disrespectful to the people around us. But here it describes to us that the blessed Christians are people who refuse to be influenced by those who are against God's ways, by those who are happy to dwell in their sin, by those who constantly make fun of other people's life. So what is interesting is that the psalmist chooses three verbs here to carefully warn us that be careful, Christians, you could progress from someone who walks by the wicked 
to slowly begin to listen to their conversation, to stand with them. And worse still, to sit with the people who mock at others. We must be we must be careful of the slow but sure consequences when we are not formed by God's word. Brothers and sisters, as we come into church every Sunday, are you well aware of what is opposite to God's way? Sometimes we feel like we know the Bible, but then do you know what is not in the Bible? Do you know what is opposite to God's way? Unless we are in God's word, there is no way that any human being is able to know what is wrong in the eyes of God. We may know what is wrong in the eyes of the world, but unless we know God's word, there's no way that you and I will know what is wrong in the eyes of God. And this is perhaps the reason why we need to dwell in the Bible. The more we dwell in the Bible, the more we realize and become sensitive to the wickedness around us. So verse 2, the psalmist invites us to a total experience. Not just a Sunday experience, but a total experience. That the blessed life that you want in Jesus Christ means that we must be completely immersed in God's Word. Not just half, not just three quarter, but that you and I are either in God's Word or we are not in God's Word at all. What, that, what then does it mean to immerse ourselves in God's Word? Have you tried before uh, putting your whole body into the swimming pool, immersing yourself, and you realize that you actually feel a lot lighter in the water because the water carries your weight? I think that gives us a sense of what it means to immerse in God's Word. Sometimes when you come to church, you come heavy laden, very tired, almost hunching back, sitting there, wondering what are you doing here. But my prayer every Sunday is that all of us who come here hunched back, tired, almost broken, will be refreshed by God's word that when we go out, huh, it is the shoulder back, looking, smiling, happy because we are immersed in God's word. We feel lighter. This is what the psalmist is saying here. Don't take it literally, okay? This is uh, poetry. So the psalmist is saying that Christians, we meditate day and night. Does not mean that you have to go around uh, reading someone day and night. Yeah? The description to us of meditating day and night is like the picture of being immersed in the water. We immerse ourselves in God's Word. This means that we not only read the word of the Bible, we carefully consider its truth in the fabrics of our life. Going back to Jim, Jim is a Christian, uh, the Jim that I described to you. Hopefully there's no Jim around us today. Huh? I'm not referring to you, okay? I'm just giving a, a fictitious a character. Jim, who comes to church right with that struggle. A Jim is the sort of Christian who says, you know, every time I read the Bible, uh, I cannot just only read. Uh, I must apply it. Uh, so I'm going to read the Bible for the rest of my life and take my time slowly to apply. Until I apply, I don't move on to the next truth. And that there is some truth in what Jim uh, feels about the Bible. He tells us that in his life that he wants to apply the truth. And I think this is what it means in verse 2, that you meditate on God's word day and night, that you delight in the law of God, that you not only know it, but you apply it. Because the blessed life that we have in Jesus Christ, it means that we open our hearts to God such that God's word will reshape our understanding and God's word will restructure our life priorities. The blessed Christian life that comes from immersing ourselves in God's Word is what uh, a Christian writer, Eugene Peterson, says. He has a book on this. 
He says, eat this book. Not only take a bite, but he says, eat this book. Uh, in his book, if you're interested, if you're a reader, go and read about how uh, spiritual reading of the Bible is supposed to be. But let me give you what he tries to explain in his book. He used the analogy of eating the book to show us that we are supposed in reading the Bible to meet the bread of life. Who is the bread of life, by the way? Who is the bread of life, by the way? Anyone? Jesus, right? That in reading the Bible, you must meet the author of the Bible, the bread of life. You must look beyond the words you must not treat the Bible like you read an Insta story. You do not read God's Word like you read an instruction manual. Read it because you want God to feed you spiritually. And when you eat the book, it means that you have to chew the book. You have to chew God's meaning that is found in the Bible and interpret it into your life. Take time to digest it so that your body takes in all the goodness. Let God, through His Word, become a part of our daily lives. As we enter into the month of November, brothers and sisters, how is your reading of the Bible this year? Have you digested its meaning into your own life? Have you let God's word examine who you are? You know, this means that we not only read it, but as we get on with life, we must digest it, we must chew it. To give you an uh, image, uh, maybe later on during lunch you can try this. Uh. If you do not chew and digest God's word, it is as if you take a plate of food. Huh? You take a plate of lunch, your lunch later, you just smell. Take a few deep breaths. Wow, smell very good. Then you, tell, you walk away and tell yourself, ah, I'm full already. I've eaten already. <laughs> also today, if you come and listen to God's word and you walk away forgetting what God's word says to you, you are like this person, smelling the food every day. What will happen after a few days? I think the person will faint, huh? No nutrients. You can smell all the aroma of the food you want. But until you take a bite, until you chew it, until you digest it and internalize it, this food, even if it's Michelin star, has no effect on you. And so in the same way, today when we look at the Bible, you may know the stories inside out. But the question is, have you chewed on it? Have you digested it? Are you able to identify God's truth in the way you live your life? If not, brothers and sisters, we may be just like this person, smelling the food, walking away, thinking that we are full spiritually, but in fact, we are hungry. Brothers and sisters, eating God's word means that we take time to ponder what God is saying to you each day. And this is the practice that I like to have. I, I hope to draw to your attention. Every time I preach a sermon, at the end, or whoever preached the sermon, at the end, there is always a prayer. My personal preference is my prayer is short so that you can pray to God yourself, so that you can tell God yourself what you have learned and what you will commit to live out in your life. Brothers and sisters, we need to chew and digest God's word. Don't just eat it and spit it out when you leave the sanctuary. Take effort to change the habits in your life. Work at how you will behave in a way that is pleasing to God until the point that you realize that this word is indeed life-giving. I have to say that today as modern Christians, huh? We lead a very fast-paced life. Sometimes we almost wish that after the preacher preached God's word, uh, the next moment you exit the door, you can live out God's word just like that. No effort needed. God will just zap you so that you can live out God's word. Unfortunately, that's not the case. 
God chooses to give us His Word, allow us to ponder over it, give us the choice to apply it in our lives. This means that when we read God's Word, it needs time. Just like when you fall sick, you take a dose of antibiotics, right? You wouldn't expect that you pop one pill and within the next few hours, you will feel well altogether again, right? The doctor will always tell us, finish your course of antibiotics. So in the same way today, your pastor is telling you, chew and digest on God's word. Be patient. Don't just read and close the Bible and get on with life. That isn't the way we will be formed by God's word. So may I encourage you, the next time when you read the Bible on your own, do two prayers. One prayer before you read the Word. Pray to the altar. Pray to the bread of life. Ask Him to show you the meaning. Because without His Holy Spirit, none of us can understand the Bible. And then after you read the Bible, pray again to God. Ask Him to help you apply as you live out your life. I go back to the character of Jim. Wonderfully, God has transformed his life because he said this prayer. He said this prayer about how he wants to apply God's word every time he read it. And what is interesting is that Jim testified to his cell group one day. It is just amazing when I say this prayer. Because when the pastor preaches that Sunday, I take home a lesson. In the coming week, God never fails to show me an opportunity that I, I can apply His Word. Dear brothers and sisters, someone shows us that we need to chew on God's Word until it brings delight. That when we approach God's Word, I think the attitude that we have is important. Giving it time to digest, giving it time for us to chew on it, for us to enjoy until it brings us delight is important. To put it in three words, this is faith-seeking understanding. Let me say it again. Christian, when we handle God's work well, we must come in this attitude of faith-seeking understanding. If you are just simply seeking understanding, go to a university. Don't come to church. If you come to church, you must have that faith that God will bring His Word true to your life when you understand it. That God will take time to cause you to be immersed in His Word, to cause a change in your life to bring the blessing that He promised. If only we will come by faith. And so that means that there will be times when you open God's word, ah, maybe the book of Daniel, ah, Hina, wow, so many imageries, right? Sometimes we come, we read the Bible, we don't fully understand. But if you come by faith, you know that this word is not written by human beings. This word is given by your God who loves you. And so we come by trusting that God is perfectly good. And so we come by faith to apply God's word into our daily lives. And that we learn to watch how we choose to live by faith, how we choose to live by God's truth will slowly but surely bring delight to you. Be patient, brothers and sisters, today if you face difficulty in reading the Bible. Be diligent to keep going back to this bread of life as you read the Bible. I speak this out of experience. Uh, I, I decided at one point to quit my job as engineer, to go uh, to the Bible school to study for three years. You know why do I want to go to the Bible school? It's not so that I can become a pastor, but I'm convinced that after being a Christian at the time I was 30 years old, actually, I don't know what the Bible is talking about. 
So I decided to leave my full-time job to become a full-time student of God's Word. Today, I stand before you. That was my decision that was made, or rather, my family decision that was made 10 years ago. And I tell you today that I still have not fully understand God's Word. This Word of God is so, so rich that it will take us a lifetime to make sense of what it means to live this life of blessedness. So hanging there today, if you are struggling with reading the Bible, if you always, ah yeah, I don't understand. Ah yeah, what is this talking about? Take time to chew and to digest it. Take time to believe that God will bring His Word true to your life. And very soon, we will enjoy the delight that God brings through His Word. Besides the delight that the psalmist promised us when we immerse ourselves in God's Word, the psalmist goes on to tell us that there is a visible sign if we are immersed in God's Word. There is a real impact in our lives that other people can see, right? Today, as you come into the church as a pastor, I tell you honestly, I don't know whether you read the Bible in the past week or not. I can't see from your face whether you read five minutes, ten minutes. I know some of us, Tuesday night, we read for three hours. Huh? <laughs> some of us are in disciple class. But what is interesting is that the psalmist shows us that there is a real impact if you are reading God's Word, if you are immersed in God's Word. He gives us this image in verse 3. This is the visible impact of a blessed life. That the Christian is like a tree planted by streams of water. Today, if you are living by God's word, you are like this tree planted by water. Through the leaves, you don't know whether, uh, through the, the tree uh, above the ground, you can't see if the tree is taking in water. But we know that the tree has roots, right? So it takes in the nutrients and the water that comes from the river. And so in the same way, by giving us this picture of a tree planted by streams of water, the psalmist is telling us that Christians today, if you feel like you are malnutrition, if you feel like you are drying up inside, and maybe then you should plant yourself by the streams of water. Maybe you need to begin to chew on God's word a little longer. Such nourishment is invisible to the world because the roots that take in the limitless nutrition from the underneath of the ground, no one can see. And so in the same way as Christians, when you and I chew and digest and apply God's word, no one can see. But we know whether you are drinking this river of life that comes from Jesus. Because what we can see, especially Christians, we can see is the result of it. right? Like a tree planted by streams of water. Ah, I put the tree there with fruits, huh? we can observe that there will be fruits. We can observe that the leaves do not wither away. So in the same way, Christians, we who are rooted in God's word, we will be identified by our fruits. That Christians will not only be full of life, but that we will begin to show spiritual results because we are immersed by God's Word. You know, often I find that Christians who bear fruits, uh, who are immersed in God's Word, uh, you take notice, sorry, uh, I'm going to uh, pauto some of you, okay? In your cell sessions, uh, you notice, if people talk about how they are transformed by God's Word 20, 30, 40 years ago, uh, maybe they are not currently not immersed in God's Word. If we keep sharing of how God has worked in our lives decades ago, maybe our leaves have somehow withered a little bit. Maybe we don't have fruits in the recent times to share with Christians around us. 
that our testimony about God has to be of recent days, weeks, and months. Like a tree on a health, like, like leaves on healthy tree, right? Uh, some of us just came back from overseas. You will have seen how the leaves will change color in autumn, right? This is how you know that the tree is healthy. So in the same way, as the seasons in our life change, have, God, have you been immersed in God's word that it, God's word continue to speak into your new season of life? Or are you still talking about, wow, 40 years ago, uh, you know, I said the sinner's prayer. Uh, in, in the military terms, we call it hentakaki. Uh, huh? You just keep marching on the spot, not moving forward. Perhaps the image of a tree reminds us that as the seasons in life change, as we progress through the seasons in our life, God will cause us to grow. God will cause fruits to happen. So this idea of fruits is rather abstract, right? Pastor, what fruits are you talking about? Are you a banana, apple, or orange? Or maybe a bit expensive, strawberry. Lah, huh? uh, what fruits is, are you talking about? If you have a chance, read through the Gospel of John. I think the youths are going to do it next year. Read through the Gospel of John. John tells us some fruits, and I summarize it for you here. What fruits are we talking about here when a Christian is planted by streams of water? One, godly character. Suddenly you see the person becoming more patient. Huh? Wait the bus, wait for 811 with you. I am not grumbling anymore. Ah, this person is planted by streams of water. Godly character. Two, the person is the Christian is more and more interested in the salvation of other people. No longer thinking about which holiday to go next, but which person needs to come to Christ next. That's the second fruit. Third, you begin to see that person acting in sacrificial love. It's no longer about my needs, but the good of other people. These are the fruits that the Bible talks about. These fruits are not like the successors of the world, huh, where the parents often tell, I, I'm also sometimes guilty of it, I need to change my narrative. The parents often tell the child, right, you better work hard, huh? next time not, you sweep the floor. These fruits in the Bible are not the successors of the world having a good job, having a comfortable life, having a big reputation or becoming influential. The psalmist describes that such successes of the world is like chaff. Chaff doesn't look like leaves. So sometimes we, we can mistaken it like fruits. But what the Bible tells us, is the difference between fruits and chaffs is that chaffs is very light. When the wind blows, the chaffs are naturally blown away. So in the same way, today if you are seeking after the worldly successes of money, influence, status, may I suggest to you that the Bible has told us clearly, all these will be gone on the day of judgment. Hopefully our fruits mistaken fruits will not be blown away on the day of final judgment. Today, they can look very attractive to us. The child in our lives can look very attractive. But may I suggest to you that they will not be important at all on the other side of eternity. And you can say, wow, Pastor, this sounds very harsh. Eh? The psalmist is almost saying, huh, if you are not rooted in God's word, right, you are like the wicked, right? It says that there's only two ways, right? The way of the righteous and the way of the wicked. Are we really like the wicked? Is it really only black and white in this world? May I suggest to you, uh, I, I, I can't give an answer, an absolute answer to you as I meditate over and over again in this but may I suggest to you, I have seen too many life experiences of people who are not immersed in God's word. They think they know the Bible, but after a while, they slip away, firstly, out of their cell group, secondly, out of Sunday service, thirdly, when the lay leader called, don't want to answer already, slowly, don't want to have anything to do with the church. 
One day they turn up and say, I don't believe there's even a God in this world. I think at the end of times, there is really only black and white. At the end of time, there's only the righteous and the wicked. The question is, which side will, be, will you be on? I think the only way that the Bible or this psalm paints to us is unless we are rooted in God's Word, unless we are nourished internally by God's Word, our sinful nature will take over any time. Even though you can wear a big tag to say that I'm a Christian, even though you can hold up your baptism cert and say that, even though you can wear a clergy collar, all of us will fall if we don't depend on God's word. Because left to our own device, we will naturally go after our kind of successes and leave behind God's word. We will naturally go after what is attractive today, but not in eternal. So may I suggest to you that the blessed Christian life means that we are rooted in God's word and that we will bear eternal fruits in time. So brothers and sisters, what kind of fruits are you chasing after today? Are you immersing yourself in God's word to bear eternal fruits? Uh, come, since now we are already in November, huh? look back at yourself in January. Have you become more patient? Have you become more gentle? Are you more kind? Have you realized, uh, I, I often found myself in this position, that sometimes when I'm very critical with my words to other people, sometimes I find myself after that confessing to God. So sometimes you see me on the bus closing my eyes, you know what am I doing, okay? I perhaps I say the wrong thing. I ask God for forgiveness first. And then I go to the person and ask the person for forgiveness. Bearing internal fruits means that we will become more and more like Jesus Christ. That never in our lives we are meant to hentakaki. We are meant to grow to be like Jesus Christ. Bearing eternal fruits also means that we become more and more involved in sacrificial service. And to this, I salute our LCC stewards who faithfully serve behind the scene in our planning in the last few months. Somehow, as you bear the eternal fruits, you also realize that when you pray, huh, you no longer just pray for yourself. You, know? you realize that in your prayer, you begin to pray for the people around you. You begin to call on God's name for a particular pre-believer, wishing that salvation will come to this friend or this loved one of yours. Bearing eternal fruits means that we become more and more concerned with those who are weak in their faith. Dear brothers and sisters, today are you rooted in God's word? Then you will be able to detect the eternal fruits in your life today. I am going to conclude the sermon with the title that I choose for this sermon. It's called Prime Position. Prime just means that we are well positioned. You and I as Christians, we have received the Bible. This gives us a good position to be in. Uh, for those of us who love F1, huh? Formula One race, you know that if you are in pole position, it's quite likely you will win. Huh? But there's too many F1 races that show us even if you are the pole position, you may not win the title in the end. So in the same way, when we think of ourselves as Christians who are well positioned, you have the Bible. But the question is, have you received God's word into your heart? Have you taken time to chew on it so that it brings delight in your life? Have you begun to bear the eternal fruits of blessedness that the Bible promises you? This is exactly what YMM we will do in the coming year. Yesterday, as our LCC concludes our retreat, our leadership has charted the way for us in 2025 for all of us here together to be rooted in God's Word. 
By the way, that's the four words, that's the theme for next year, YMAM's team, huh? rooted in God's word. We are not just going to pound you with many Bible reading after Bible reading. We're not just going to run Bible study classes, but rather we wish that each one of us will begin to check our roots. Do you have roots? Are the roots deep enough? If not, may I suggest to you that next year is the year for us, our, for our roots to grow so much deeper so that when the storms come in our lives, we won't be blown away like the tree, you know? Too many trees, right, in Yishun that have fallen when the rain comes. Today, if we are truly in the prime position that God intends us to be, may I suggest that you begin to examine where is God's word in your life. I'm very excited with the plans that our leaders have put together. But not, not so fast. I'm not going to tell you what's the plan yet because we have to make the plan uh, we have to implement the plan in the next six weeks before we enter into the new year. But until then, may I suggest to you that each of us here ask ourselves, where are you with God's word? Is it in your life every day? Are you chewing on it? Do you see the eternal fruits? I conclude my sermon by going back to Jim. Jim, as a grown adult, realized that to be rooted in God's word is to be in God's community. He found a reason why he should listen, he should come to church and listen to sermon week after week. It is not only about the knowledge, but it is in the community that we are formed by God's word. Because what is interesting is that, you know, in the eternal fruits that I shared with you from the Gospel of John, the three eternal fruits, this eternal fruit brings us to a life of blessedness. But these fruits are not meant for us to enjoy. Have you seen a mango tree eating mango? No, right? The mango tree bears fruits for other people to enjoy. Because this is exactly what Jesus did in his earthly life. He gave of himself. He lived that perfect blessed life so that today you and I can enjoy the fruit of salvation that comes from Him. So in the same way, the more you are formed by God's Word, may I suggest to you, the more giving you are to the people in your life, the more you are willing to share God's blessing that you receive with other people. And I pray that in the coming year, this will be true of us here in YMM. Come, let us pray. As we bow our heads and quiet down our hearts, what is one thing that the Lord, the bread of life, is speaking to you today? This is the space in our worship service for you to encounter your God of life. Would you, in your prayer, commit yourself to Him? Commit to chewing and digesting His Word, asking that He will bring the fruits, the eternal fruits in your life. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for you have put in our hands this eternal treasure of your word that enable us to know what it means to be your child. Enable us to understand who you truly are. So we, I pray for all of us here that today as we have listened to your word, Lord, we want to be that tree that is planted by your stream, O oh God. We want to feed on you and chew on you, O oh God, so that our lives is indeed nourished from the inside out, so that indeed we will have the delight that you promised us in the Bible. 
Lord, would you cause that to happen for each one of us? Help us to overcome the difficulties that we face in reading your word. Help us to approach your Bible by faith. For we pray all these in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, rest rise. As we sing this response song, learning how to walk with God and to be able to grow deep roots into His words. When we walk with the Lord In the light of His Word What a glory He sheds on our ways While we do His good will He abides with us still And with all who will trust and obey Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the sky. But his smile quickly drives it away Not a doubt nor a fear Not a sign nor a tear Can abide while we trust and obey Trust and obey For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrows we share, but a toy he doth richly repay. Not a grief, nor a loss, not a frown, nor a cross, but it's blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of His love Until all on the altar we lay For the favour He shows and the joy He bestows Are for those who will trust and obey Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will weed at His feet. Or oh, we'll walk by His side in the way What He says we will do When He sends we will go Never fear, only trust and obey Trust and obey Trust and obey For there's no other way To be happy but to trust and obey One more time 
trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey come let us pray yes Lord indeed we want to learn to trust you and obey you for the commandments and the word of life they have given us Lord we respond to you by giving of ourselves to you that today as we give of our offering and tithe we pray that you will use these fruits for your kingdom cause. We thank you also for inviting us to your table to be nourished by your presence in our lives to the bread and the cup. Lord, we ask that you remind us of who we are, redeemed children of yours in this Holy Communion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome once again to Yeshua Methodist Mission. If I think we... Can I invite you to arise? Look around you. Look for faces that you have not seen for a while or each other. Let's give a good handshake and welcome each other together. Right. Well, just a just a reminder, right? Uh, you see the the green QR code. Okay, uh, that's our website. I encourage you to come and uh, to check us out. There are a lot of updates inside. All right. Now we are. We are going to have baptism confirmation and membership class uh, this Christmas. Okay, the class will start on 17th of November, right? Uh, what we need to do is that if you are seeking baptism or confirmation, if you have been baptized as a child, uh, you come of age, you say, that was my parents' uh, uh, faith. Today, I'm going to make it my own faith. All right, that's where you come for confirmation. And those of us who have been worshipping with us from another church, all right, your membership is another church, we welcome you. If you find that this is a, a place where you can call home, you like to fellowship with us, uh, you can sign up for a transfer of membership. Uh, but there is a catch, all right, in YMM. Uh, this is to be able to, to help us. Uh, you should be here six months uh, joining our worship regularly and be in our cell group. And then you seek for a transfer. All right? This is to help you to be truly finding a home and be rooted in it and to be able to be a part of the community on a long-term basis. All right? So if you think that this is a place... Uh, you want to go through baptism or confirmation, please sign up before the 10th of November. When is the 10th of November? Next Sunday. Okay? So get a form, sign up. Uh, if you don't know, you are not too sure, uh, come and talk to us or any of the cell leaders, okay, to find Alice, okay, our administrator, our, our uh, admin person, all right, in this. Next. Okay, we are celebrating our 12th anniversary. It's going to be an exciting time. Uh, it will be a combined service. Okay, please remember it's a combined service, meaning the English and the Chinese uh, services will be coming together. So it's going to be a big thing for us. Okay, uh, you need to sign up too. Because why? We need to cater food. All right, so we don't want you to come and say, oh, that day no food, <laughs> not enough. Okay, so we want you to sign up, okay, uh, by the 10th of November. When is it? Next Sunday. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, it's 10 a.m. Uh, the combined service. So don't come at 9 o'clock or any other time. Okay? Next, uh, this one you need to take note a little bit. Uh, CSC will be uh, doing the 49th session, an annual session. Okay? Uh, this is the time where posting will take place, things will, changes that will take place will take place there. Okay? So, on the 11th of November is the opening service. When is the opening service? 11th of November. Then the closing service is on the 14th of uh, November. Okay? Now, sometimes we, we want to find out whether our Reverend Bernard will be posted out or remain here in YMM after this session. Okay, you can find out by joining the CAC WhatsApp channel. Now, this is important because this year, there's going to be a change of CAC president. They'll be electing a CAC president. So we don't know who it, who it will be, whom the Lord will, will, will appoint. Okay, so in this CAC WhatsApp channel, you can actually follow the news or the announcement. Okay, what do you need to do? Okay, it's very simple. You need to look at the screen there, right? The phone, right? There is a QR code. You need to scan the QR code on the screen and then you click channel for some uh, phones. But some, you, once you, you, you QR code scan, it will just come out. Okay, you need to do is to just click follow on the top right hand corner and it will send you, a, if you want notification, you just click on the bell. Okay, or you want to don't want to have notification? You check as and when you like. You just ensure that it is uh, crossed out. All right. So once you do that, that's it. Okay. So you get all the news from CAC and things like that in there. So you can keep yourself updated. Okay. Any other question later on? We can uh, do it after after the service. Okay. And now as so. G, we are left with only two sessions uh, on God and Mute. All right? So, uh, do come. Okay? The next session, the fourth session will be on the 10th of November. Okay? Next Sunday. So, be back after you have eaten your lunch on that day itself. Next, we have next Sunday. Okay? It's the 10th of November. It will be Sacred Music Sunday. Uh, Pastor Yotek Beng, okay, will come and preach, bring us the word from Nehemiah 8, 5 to 6, Revelation 3, 14 to 15, and the topic is 3, 4, Amen. Okay, what is that? Come and uh, hear the word of God next week. Let us rise. We will have our same fourth song after which I invite our reverend to come and give us the benediction. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take Him at His word Just to rest upon His promise Just to know the says the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him How I prove in all and all Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge. Be the healing, cleansing flood Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him How I prove in all and all Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus Oh, for grace to trust Him more Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus 
Just from sin and sell to cease Just from Jesus simply taking Life and rest and joy and peace Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him How I prove in all and all Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus Oh, for grace to trust Him all Let's sing the last verse I'm so glad I learned to trust Him Precious Jesus, Savior, friend And I know that Thou art with me Will be with me to the end Jesus Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him How I prove in all and all Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus Oh, for grace to trust Him Jesus, 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 precious Jesus Oh, for grace to trust Him more Come, let us receive the benediction. Go forth to trust Jesus in His Word. And as you do so, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We have come to the end of our service.